uh, people arbitrarily decided what went in these scriptures. Uh, there's a lot of other alternative books that were possible, and somewhere along the line, someone decided that you know these are the books that would go in the in the Bible. And we had a book back in 1982 that kind of started it all. It was called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. That was one of the main sources for the Da Vinci Code, even, and it introduced this idea that uh, there's other Gospels that were out there, and uh, they actually used, uh, at the time, a Gospel called the Gospel of Philip. And it became very popular to sort of say, well, let's take another look at the Bible. Maybe what we have isn't... Uh, what it's supposed to be, and maybe there are alternatives. And so then the whole uh, issue came up around things called the Gnostic Gospels. And these were, um, back in 1979, a study of the Gnostic movement, which came out in the early days. What, what does Gnostic mean? Well, the Gnostic were uh, Greeks in the early days that uh, were seeking for knowledge that would be external. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, from the Greek word for knowledge, meaning, you know, that you can experience or, or know things beyond just what was in the scriptures. And that was a whole movement that came out. And there was a, the author of the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, uh, was a, a lady from Princeton who argued that uh, many of the things that we have in the scriptures are questionable and that there are other books. And, of course, a big popular one that came out as a result of that was this whole area around the Gospel of Judas saying, wait a minute, we've always made Judas this person in the scriptures. They actually wrote a, wrote a uh, text about what he had, and that became very popular in, about two years ago or about a year ago. You know, that was a, uh, a feature of television programs and everything else. Yeah, and, and Judas was kind of a hero in that. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, hey, I was just doing what Jesus asked me to do. And it was like this was something new. Well, in reality, all these things are not new. And I think that's one of the things we'll see today is uh, attack on the integrity of the scriptures is not something new. It's been around a long time. It gets revived uh, because somebody comes along that's going to revive it. And that's unfortunately what's kind of happened today. Uh, some of the more popular authors uh, have actually started attacking the scriptures themselves, people who were scholars. And one of the most popular ones recently is a uh, person named Bart Ehrman. And Ehrman was a uh, pretty much a, a traditional Christian scholar who believed in the inspiration of scriptures, was uh, very adamant about defending the Gospels, suddenly decided, I can't do this anymore. And he uh, started writing a number of books. Uh, now, and the most popular one recently was a book he published in 2007, called Misquoting Jesus. And this is where he introduced the ideas that I think we're going to discuss a lot today, but this idea that we really maybe can't trust the scriptures that we have as much as we should because, hey, you know, it was a long time ago and we had uh, scholar, or we had copyists, we had scribes that were uh, writing copies of something they had. There were copies of copies coming along and you know, every time, uh, those maybe, uh, they dropped a lot of things that were important, but also the idea that we don't even know if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John really wrote the Gospels. Because you're dealing with copies of copies That's right. of copies, and, and, and then it becomes hearsay, and, right. and, and, and I, yeah, I heard that, and so yeah. forth. Okay. So it's, there was a very little work on the, on the Jewish Testament, but a lot of attacks have been coming in on, uh, what would be the, the, the newer testament. Test well, we and, and the New Testament is really what we base right. our our whole belief system on. We believe that the New Testament is built on the base of the Old Testament, but we take our admonitions for daily living as Christians from the New Testament. Right. So this is the, the the part of the Bible that has really been under attack. It's I've got a copy of the book misquoting Jesus here with me this morning, and we'll be reading from it in a little while. But let, let's continue here, and folks. Um, if you have a thought, give us a call. It is 860-442-9956. That's 860-442-WXLM. Just very quickly before the break, Len, it's already time for the first break here, but let's talk just quickly about the, the canon of Scripture. Now, that's a phrase I think that people hear. I mean, but when I think of a canon, 
I, I think of this big old thing that you roll up and, you know, you're trying to kill your enemy with. What's the, what is the canon of Scripture? Well, canon really refers to the idea of what is acceptable of Scripture. What, how did they decide uh, what would be part of Scripture? And that idea came in when they were looking at um, how, how, what do we recognize. You know, there were a lot, as we said, uh, ideas out there. And, and the word canon itself is derived from a Jewish word, uh, K-A-N-E-H, uh, which was a read. In other words, it was a read, and it's described in Ezekiel, the 40th chapter, the 5th verse, and it was a standard of measure. Okay. And saying, you know, here's how we measure it. And that was first applied then to the biblical writings back in the 4th century and saying, how do we officially accept, how do we measure these to see if they're accepted by uh, authorities and communities as legitimate scripture? And okay. Then, and that's how the New Testament, that's how the word canon came in and how that idea came into being. And there were some criteria that they used, which we could discuss if you wanted to, uh, about what made something be recognized as a legitimate canon scripture, which would be officially recognized. And I think we'll probably get into that when we get to, to Jim's part, where uh, Jim has done extensive manuscript study, and that will help us to determine that. But at this point, folks, um, Fred, let's go into a break at this point. We're talking about the integrity of the Bible. We're talking about looking at the scriptures and questioning, are they really the word of God? This is Jonathan and Rick with Christian Questions on News Talk 104.7 WXLN. Grab your Bibles. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 